Now, we are going to see from the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, 12th verse, please. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. You see, folks, there was a demonstration of God's power when this astrologer or this uh, sorcerer was struck blind and could not even leave the court. He needed the assistance of somebody to lead him out. Well, they departed next to Perga and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And after the reading of the law, Paul stood up. They invited him to say a word of exhortation. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and you that fear God, give audience. And when he went on to declare Christ, then, 41, behold, Ye despisers and, and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. How amazing! Despisers of God's word. No, you cannot discard God's word that easily. So, the congregation broke up. Many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. 44th verse, the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you Jews, but seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So, you know, actually, what happened at, after this great missionary drive? The 50th verse says, the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their course. You're just not wanted here. So they expelled them. Well, what would you say? If after hard labor and honest labor, you found yourself rewarded this way, what would you say? You know, I would say, I deserve nothing. 
it is just a privilege to serve the Lord. In certain places like Bangladesh and uh, nowadays they want to receive me with bouquets. I say, have I declined to that degree? that I don't get brick baths instead? These early preachers of the good news were rewarded with brick baths. You see, and the next place you will find Iconium, 14th chapter in the fifth verse. When there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews, with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled. What? Expelled? Fled? Wasn't God in control? Yes, he was in control. You know, my dear friends, persecution does no harm whatever. I know, you know, I know young people, young girls who have been burned with red hot iron, you know, burned by their own fathers. But that did not deter them. They only became stronger in their faith. You see, as a matter of fact, we've been cuddled too badly. We've had it so easy. We've known little persecution. You see? Blessed are you when all men shall speak evil about you. You see? As a matter of fact, we, we love praises, isn't it? But... Praises don't do any good. Applause doesn't do any good to us. What are the marks that God would give you? You see, loving God and loving your neighbor. These go together. And failure to reach souls is a serious thing. I'd, you know, when I was told in, uh, in East Germany at the height of their communism, a dear old lady just said to me, I live in an old people's home, and even when a person is dying, we are not allowed to talk about Jesus Christ. And when did Britain get worse than that? When nurses and doctors can't talk about Jesus Christ. Why? What a sad is this Britain at all? Is there freedom of speech? Or Europe is in control? And the laws of Europe? Europe has had a different history. But there were those men who were martyred for Christ. 
simple men who fought for an open Bible in this country. Now listen, my dear friends, to turn your back upon your heritage and that which is noble in your heritage. And I love some Tom Dicks and Harrys from various other locations to get you in a state where you're washed out and have lost your great heritage. What a tragedy that is. My dear friends, the Bible records these things carefully for our learning. I never promise comfort, nor do I seek it. I don't even seek security. Oh, they said to me when I wanted to go to, uh, accepted the invitation to Bangladesh, well, security reasons, you have to be very careful. But I don't believe I was restricted in any way. In fact, I told the preachers the, uh, and leaders that God will give them courage to stand for the truth in the midst of persecution and danger. All right, today, Islam is causing Britain to bend over backwards to please. What sense is there in it? All right, look at the record of history. 22 women, and you still call a man a prophet? And amongst them, a nine-year-old girl? And still, you can terrorize the world saying that you have a higher morality. That shows, of course, the declension in the morality of the West. It's all over the world today. Thanks to Hollywood and so on. But what kind of uh, Christians will arise? You know, these things only strengthen your muzzle and your determination to stand for Jesus. Now, friends, The Bible says in the 14th chapter and the third verse, Long time therefore about the speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, which gave testimony to, unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Who is to give testimony? Who is behind your testimony? It's the Lord. The Lord gave testimony. The Lord just did not leave these people out on a limb. You know, we don't like to be left on a limb, do we? 
The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. My dear friends, what are these promises for? The Lord says, I am going to be the one that will back you, that will give you testimony that you are mine. My dear friends, I can't forget. Certain things have taken place in the communist countries which are simply so remarkable. And uh, like some people were taken to some of the coldest regions of the earth in Siberia. And, and all their clothes were removed. And while their persecutors expect they expected them to fall dead in a few moments, they stood untouched. And of course, the communist mind denies the supernatural. And some of them had no explanation. They said, what is this we are seeing? Not a stitch of clothing on these people in this freezing weather when they should be dead in a few moments. Here they stand, untouched, unperturbed. And some of them were women. You see, we don't expect God to bear any testimony. It's very sad. We have cranked up a church situation where we are the big fellows. What? You and I should just sink into that platform. And so that Christ only must may be seen. You know, my dear friends, with all the fancy degrees that people have today, you know, it only makes them proud and top-heavy. That's all. They can't be humble. They can't say, Lord, you bear testimony. I am nobody around here. What? Can't we be humble? Can't we see and recognize that what we are doing for Christ is so pitiably small? Of course. So, dear friends, it's the Lord who testifies, and I will close with the last verse of Mark. And I tell you, I love this verse and I revert to it again and again and again. Last verse of Mark. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Yes, Britain has to see and Europe has to see the supernatural.
Christ working with us and confirming the word. John Wesley sometimes closed his meeting with this cry, Lord, confirm your word. And people would be stricken with conviction. Some physicians and others would think, oh, these folks around here are faking it. No, it was no faking that was going on. People were so convicted. Sometimes we have had people carried out out of our meetings. They were under such strong conviction that they fell down. I recall a situation where Conviction descended upon a great big meeting which I was addressing in the United States. And they said to me, a man has fallen. Well, who was he? He was a strong, well-built carpenter. But he had strange, wicked designs, even of divorcing his wife. And when conviction struck him, the man fell down on the floor of that great hall. Now, my dear friends, we need God to work. It's not a question of hours talking and any number of words. Let's see God at work. Let us pray. Lord our God, let not the nonchalance and the kind of reticence which is prevalent amongst the people of the country, the inhabitants of the country. The cold indifference be a hindrance, I pray. O oh Lord our God, let there be freedom of expression. Let not the law books that carried such noble laws become sullied and dirtied with this kowtowing to the gutter, to the sewage. Oh, my Father, let the people come to themselves. Open the understanding of and of the rulers. They cannot write the country. The usual forces are totally inept and unable to promote any safety on the streets. O oh Lord, let not young people go around in gangs, 
tearing, killing one another up. Oh, my Father, have compassion upon the nation. We beg you in Jesus' holy name. Amen.